All right, guys, and now I want to introduce the topic of the art of defense in chess. So how do we defend against kingside attacks, against sacrifices, against all the scary stuff that everyone is scared of? Well, first of all, it's easier to attack than to defend, so try to avoid defending. But strong players have to learn how to defend because they'll have to do it in uh, a good part of their games, no matter whether they like it or not. So we have to learn how to do it. So. There are a few hints which I will go through uh, as we uh, look through this game played between two grandmasters. So you see, uh, white was a grandmaster by the name of Timon, and black was a grandmaster by the name of Gligorich. And white started off with this interesting pawn sacrifice, and he says e5. So, step one of defense don't panic, don't start shouting, oh no, he's gonna get my king. No. That's not the way to defend. Uh, don't panic by just giving up and by t uh, letting the opponent do what he wants you to do. So the opponent wants you to take with the bishop, so try to avoid um, the opponent's vicious, right? So what does this do? It opens up the e-file while our king is in the center. So as we know, when the king is in the center, the defender wants to close the center and keep pawns on there. That's why black took with the pawn. And he says, please trade. Second principle of defense, always try to trade, especially queens. Uh, because if we can get to any endgame up a pawn, as we are right now, it doesn't matter that the opponent has a development advantage, that he's already castled, that doesn't matter at all. It just matters who has more pawns at the end of the day. So black says, do you want to trade? And white says, of course not. Uh, and black says, how about the bishop? I want to trade the bishop. Is that okay? And white said, okay, sure but I'll trade on my terms. No problem, we'll trade anyway. So they traded off bishops, and now it's a matter of defending this poor king. You see, he has some problems. Um, he can't really castle this way, or at least he's gonna have a hard time doing it. Uh, all of his pieces are sleeping, and white has a lead in development uh, due to the two knights coming out, already castle king, and the d file and the e file will be problematic when the rooks get there. So black has to hurry to make sure everything's defended. So he takes out the bishop, preparing something like queen e7 and castling. You should all already have a map of how you're gonna get out of the problem. Find some idea, some resources usually, uh, to get your king to safety. Okay? White says, no problem, I just uh, will continue development and you'll have to deal with your uh, problems yourself. So knight h6, right? We take out the minor pieces first and we try to trade off the troublemakers as the defender. So a lot of a lot of the time we will have one bad piece, one gloomy piece and one uh, bad piece will bring gloom to your whole position, will make your position very stormy and really, really bad. So uh, we have to trade off the troublemaker. If you have the troublemaker on g8, then do anything you can to trade him for a good piece like that beautiful knight on g5 on, the, on that nice outpost. Uh, and as we trade off pieces, the opponent has less and less attackers, so we don't have as much to worry about. The usual rule is that if we have uh, enough defenders uh, over their attackers, and usually the difference is two defenders uh, versus four attackers, as long as they don't have two more attackers than we do have uh, defenders, then we're okay. So let's say right now we have one defender, two defenders, and maybe three defenders. If they have only one, two, three attackers, let's say the rook comes here, we're fine. But if they have one, two, three, four, five attackers, and we only have queen, bishop, and a knight, if the knight comes to help out, then we're in trouble. Okay? So it's the rule of two. We need to have um, at least three versus uh, four or two versus three, but not three versus five, then we lose, okay? Uh, Capablanca's rule also states that the king should be protected by two minor pieces. So let's say uh, the king is castled, he should be protected by a knight and a bishop, okay? So try to have two minor pieces protecting your king or two pieces of any kind. If you want to have a queen and a rook, sure. But the uh, queen should usually be attacking stuff. That's why we use the minor pieces to defend. Okay, so let's see what happened next. White said, let's attack e5. And black said, no, so quickly. And we're happy to give away um, any extra material 
as a sort of gift that we give them back so they gave us a gift and now we'll give it back as long as we get out of the attack as long as, as we find a way to uh, defend in the end okay so black says please go ahead take me i'll take back and then uh you can take my pawn as long as i get to trade off the queen in the future maybe i'll bring my rook out right now let's bring it to d e8 and everything's fine this position is roughly equal it's not that bad it could be much worse so white said no 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 i want to keep as many attackers on the board as possible uh and also i don't want to just take the pawn because I'll take it later and for now I'll just bring in more pieces to the attack to get closer to your king so I can have two more attackers than you have defenders. Let's see how that worked out for him. What, uh, Black took on g5, trading off as many attackers as possible so he doesn't have to worry about them and now Black finishes development. So you have to finish the piece race eventually. You can't just keep your pieces back and hope for the best. Okay? Uh, and now white says let's open up all these files and the second or the, the next uh, principle of defense is always close uh, the position when you can just close everything up if you can close it's better for the defender the the, the attacker wants to open so the attacker should look for moves like knight takes e4 rookie one trying to sacrifice and break through the defender wants to close all those files, so he closes both files at once with this excellent e4 move, okay? Uh, white says, you wanted to castle? Nope. So, good attacking move, but black doesn't care, because now black gets really brave and goes to the next principle of defense. If you're gonna defend, defend for something, don't just defend for free. Otherwise, you're just suffering for no reason. If you want to suffer for something, suffer for a pawn or two which is what he's gonna do in this game. At least that way, at the end, if you can fight off the attack and be brave enough not to get made it and uh, stop the opponent's threats, then you're gonna have two pawns that you can uh, use in the end game and uh, take those two pawns all the way to the back, bank, uh, laughing while you do so. So that's Black, Black's plan right now, just to take a bunch of pawns, defend against White's attack and say, uh, so what? I don't care about your attack. White tries to close off the queen, no problem. If you don't see a reason why you shouldn't take a pawn, you should take, on, uh, you should take all the pawns you can, right? If you see a very good reason, like it's a poison pawn, if there was some checkmate, if you take it, uh, okay, then maybe it's a bad idea right but if there is no reason why you shouldn't and it opens up the queen's scope it's probably a good idea to take it anyways sometimes um, you should be greedy as Korsnoy said who was a famous grandmaster who's brilliant at defending a good chess player is a greedy chess player be greedy uh, if you don't see a reason why you shouldn't so white says queen to e3 i'm going to set up the attack on your king you better be scared of me and black just says okay i'll get my king off the file so stop any problems before they arise if you see somebody looking at your king just get the king out of the way the king doesn't look so safe here but who can get him i have a roof the roof is open but at least it's safer than where i was before right if white takes my pawn now all the pieces are coming and now black is gonna be the one attacking very soon so you see black is making his pieces better and better leaving uh, those pieces in the game uh, that he wants remember those knights the knight on h6 we got rid of him remember that bishop bishop on d6 we got rid of him because we didn't need him he was an ugly bishop and an ugly knight so we traded them off the troublemakers and left the pieces that we need like this bishop which protects important pawns okay uh, white says h3 and clearly he wants to play g4 to open things up right and we want to keep things closed so black just says queen a3 and he's already planning for what's about to come a wise warrior deals with his, with his threats one at a time so if white wants to play g4 black is already thinking hmm i know you're gonna play that so how can i stop it oh later on after all those trades my queen can come to c5 also the queen has no good squares here so we should bring it to a square where it does something this is called old man to the king 
that's one way of defending just bring everyone close to the king and just hide him with his own pieces or uh, so the majesty feel feels protected right uh, that's one way of doing it but it's a very passive way uh, the second way of defending is the counter attack right so when the opponent starts attacking you we start attacking them when your pieces are good you can counter attack but when your pieces are sloppy or lazy like that rook on e8 you should just go for the seat belt method just strap your seat belt on and hope for the best and that's what black is doing right now just hoping for the best uh i want to tell you guys why a good attacker will be a good defender a good attacker will know what the attacker is thinking so when he's on the defending side he can read the attacker's mind and say ah you want to play g4 okay i will find a way to stop you or uh defend against the threat anyways so black just gets greedy and takes everything he can and after queen takes e4 says oh let me create some problems for you now and when you start to counter attack the opponent gets frustrated and annoyed and says why didn't i finish this game yet why is he still breathing and kicking so white has to uh, bring the rook and pin his own rook which is pretty sad and the queen is now playing an important role he's a very strong queen on c5 plus he's up like a million pawns right so good for black any end game is now winning if he can trade off the queens uh, so he deals with one threat at a time the pawn was under attack a very important pawn a very important square so we defend it and bring uh, and plan to bring the second rook into the game next move white says let me pin another rook so at least this one can go free no problem we just bring in all our pieces finally we completed development after all this time so the rest doesn't scare us if your pieces are good the opponent's attack shouldn't work logically it shouldn't there is no reason for it to work you should be able to defend it's the problem happens when the opponent's pieces are good and your pieces are bad that's what you have to avoid so a good defender is just a player who makes his pieces good or at least no worse than the uh, opponent okay now the bishop was under attack no problem we just bring it back make sure that nothing's hanging right the bishop is very safe here and he's still doing an important job covering all those important squares the rook can't come in right even if it wasn't pinned um the e6 square is under control the bishop is doing a great job he control the important squares as the defender okay white says let me create some more threats on the h file like knight h7 Black says, go ahead, I'll take everything. I'm a greedy guy. If I don't see a reason why I shouldn't, then I'll do it. And the reason why knight h7 is not so good right now is actually because of this check. So after this check, white has to go away, protect his rook. But now we can just sacrifice the queen and take your knight and say, oh, I don't see any forks. I don't see any problems. Right now, I have so many pawns and I will start pushing them very soon. My king is safe with the two rooks protecting and the bishop coming in to protect. Uh, you can't get to my picnic table with the rook at least. So, and I can always protect it with the, my rook if anything. I'm really safe here and you're going to lose this as I start pushing my pawns down. But that's still better than what white played in the game, which was just the rook to d3, allowing for check and queen takes f4 in the final position it's actually white who's under a more of an attack than black so it's a funny turn of events that happen so guys just to summarize close the position trade off as many pieces as possible deal with opponent's threats one threat at a time don't panic never hurry and uh, if you can be greedy if you don't see a reason why you shouldn't hope that helps in your defense and if you're a good attacker, then you'll be a good defender.